Amen. Bless God. And um, just everybody else, welcome. Amen. The rest of you, you are not visitors. You are part of the family. Be the same without you. So we just want to welcome you. And let me just quickly give you the announcements before I give you the announcement. I just want to say that we had a wonderful men's prayer yesterday. Amen. And six men were there. So help me come. So I was there one. Brother Deacon was there. Brother Dai was there. Brother Kenwar was there. Brother Tevin was there. That's five. Who was the last one? Jalil. Jalil was there. So Jalil was at his first men's prayer meeting. And can I tell you, it was because you know what, Brother Kenwar, I heard him in the back. Baby prayer. Amen. Bless God. So it is good. We want our children to grow in the house of God. We want them to, to get to know everything and everything that we do. Amen. They must be a part of. But this week we continue with our prayer meeting on Tuesdays. Every Tuesday. We have prayer meeting online every Tuesday at 7. And you, there's a Zoom link if you're interested. We can share it with you. Amen. And now uh, we can join. So on Tuesday have uh, prayer meeting on Wednesdays Bible study and so Bible studies is normally uh, you know online you can come on Zoom we have been having some difficulties because we normally stream on Facebook and YouTube and we had some we have been having serious technical difficulties but we hope to start that out this week Amen bless God Amen so I don't know what happened last week Amen but you know this week we we'll start it out and so the full lesson was in online, I hope to get it online before, amen, before Wednesday. I hope to get it online. And then on Thursday, Tom next, and that's our, well, Wednesday, rather, is Bible study. But Wednesday is also a day of prayer and fasting for us. And so everybody is in a part of praying and fasting. So ensure that you take part in the prayer and the fasting on Wednesday, through your fast. Then on Thursday, there is them where you pray for families for at least 10 minutes. And you need to pray for the nation and read a chapter, amen, from the Bible. And finally, on Friday, there is youth service, amen. So a youth service on Friday. So come out and join our young people, the same Zoom link, amen, bless God. And, um, and that's it, amen, for the week of next Sunday. I, I want to make a special announcement. Next Sunday is Mission Sunday, but also next Sunday we're going to have another communion service. And so next Sunday we're going to have communion right after service, immediately after service. Amen. And then you know, from there on, I think we might have communion every first Sunday on Mission Sunday. Amen. Is that, is that all right? Amen. Bless God. <laughs> You know, so right after service on Sunday, we're going to go into our communion. And so I've decided to just do it once a month, because there's no restriction, there's no... God just said, do it, and as much as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. Amen. Bless God. So those are your announcements. Hallelujah. Good to see you. Just, just forget about everything else. If you forgot the pot at home and the fire is on, just forget it. And said, Jesus, blow it out. Blow it, you know. <laughs> God is able. But I want you to focus on worship today. Let's just focus on worship. Let's forget about everything else. And let's worship God in the beauty of holiness. God bless you. In Jesus' name.
bless the Lord and everyone. So, in our first session of prayer, um, the topic is letting your light so shine. And I'm reading from Matthew 5, verse 16. And it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And in this session, we're going to be praying the following points. We're going to pray that we'll continue to let our light shine in this dark world as saints. And we're going to let we're going to pray that our light will lead people to Jesus. So just join me now as we pray. Lord God, we come before you, mighty God, on this prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mighty God, we ask, Lord Jesus Christ, that you will, mighty God, forgive us of all of our sins, Lord Jesus. Cleanse our hearts and our minds, mighty God, from all unrighteousness, Lord God Almighty. We pray that you will create in us, mighty God, a clean heart, Lord God Almighty, and renew, mighty God, a steadfast spirit within us. Oh God Almighty, we look to you, mighty God, because you are the God of everything. You are, mighty God, the God that can do anything, Lord Jesus Christ. And this Sunday, Lord God Almighty, in this session, mighty God, we're praying, Lord God, that you will help us, mighty God, to let our light shine before men. Oh God Almighty, there's been a lot that's going on, mighty God, a lot of fingers, mighty God, are being pointed at, at the church, Lord God, to say, oh man, I'm evil, mighty God, but I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that those mighty God that are here today, mighty God, will let their light shine. I pray, mighty God, that we will not cause, mighty God, unbelievers, Lord God Almighty, to doubt in you, mighty God, that we will not, mighty God, allow Lord Jesus Christ for wickedness in our hearts, Lord God, to cause, mighty God, unbelievers, mighty God, and persons, mighty God, that are looking on, on us, mighty God, hallelujah, to think, mighty God, that you are not a God that's able, to think that you are not a God that sits high, to think that you are not a God that's worthy of praise. Adoration and glory, mighty God, I pray that may God your name will not be that speak among mighty God the unbelievers because of mighty God, hallelujah, saints that choose mighty God, hallelujah, to hide their light, mighty God, under a bushel. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we will allow, oh God, the Holy Ghost to lead us. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we will humble ourselves before you, that mighty God, hallelujah, we will lay prostrate at your feet, Lord Jesus Christ, asking you, mighty God, for help. Lord Jesus, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we will do, mighty God, the things that you command us to do. I pray, Lord God, that we will bear the fruit of the Spirit, mighty God. I pray that we will not fulfill the love of the flesh, mighty God. And I pray that we will abstain, mighty God, from everything, Lord God, that you commanded us to abstain from. I pray, mighty God, that we will flee the useful love, mighty God. I pray that we will not love money. I pray that we will not love sin. Oh God, I might for everything that you hate.
can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and Mama. And the prior point are as follows. Pray that we will be careful of what and who we spend our time with, and pray that God and His Word will be first priority. And then the lesson is prioritized by the Lord. Jesus, mighty God, I thank you, O oh God, for salvation. I thank you, O oh God, for another day that we are all here together to worship you, to pray together in unity, to lift you up. Almighty oh, God, I put each and every one of us before you, from the youngest to the oldest. And I pray, Almighty oh, God, that you will be our first priority. Oh God, you will be number one in our lives, Almighty oh, God. That no other God, no other thing, oh God, no person can take your place in our lives, in our hearts, Jesus. Almighty oh, God, I pray, oh God, that each and every one of us will be careful, will be wise in who we spend our time with, Almighty oh, God. Jesus, that we'll be careful, oh God, with what we spend our time with, Almighty oh, God. Jesus, that we will be wise in picking our close friends. We'll be wise in the company that we walk with, that we talk with, Almighty oh, God. Jesus, I pray that you will be our first priority, Almighty oh, God. Jesus, any idol, any in our lives, oh God, that is above you, Almighty God, even though we might not know, oh God, but you see the heart and you know, God, what in our lives, oh God, come before you, oh God, I pray that you destroy it, Almighty God, I pray that you break it down, evil right now, oh God, I pray that you mash it up, evil right now, Jesus, Almighty God, I pray that you help each and every one of us, Almighty God, to pray, oh God, to, to, to live as a Christian, Almighty God, to pray. Oh God, to live on your oh God, to always have our minds on you and the things pertaining to you. Oh God, so that you will be number one in our lives. Oh God, number one in anything we do, Almighty oh God. Jesus, wherever we go, Almighty oh God, it will be all about you. Almighty oh God, I pray, oh God, that deep in our hearts we truly love you more than anything else. Almighty oh God, I pray, oh God, that we'll give you our all, that we'll surrender our all, that we'll be committed to you, Jesus. Almighty God, I pray, oh God, that you take control of our lives even right now. Jesus, you see all those who are struggling, Almighty God, with something on there. Oh God, whether it's the phone, whether it's social media, whether it's a boy, whether it's a girl, whether it's a friend, whatever we are struggling with. Almighty God, whatever we're putting above you, Almighty God, I pray, oh God, that we will see our wrongs, Almighty God. Jesus, oh God, I pray that you search our hearts even right now. Oh God, I pray, oh God, that you will take your place in our lives, even right now, Jesus, we pray for each and every one of us, Almighty God, that you will be number one, Almighty God, help us to remember, to think on the things that you have done for us, oh God, for all your goodness and your mercy, oh God, towards us, all your loving kindness towards us, and help us not to put anything above you, oh God, that nothing in our lives will take your place. Oh God, because you deserve number one. Oh God, Jesus, you deserve our hearts, Jesus, our souls, our mind. Oh God, just have that in our way in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus.
can have a heart to come and give his testimony. Yeah. 
that when the world when the Holy Ghost leaves the world, the person is not just going to wait around the bush to kill it. They're just going to kill it like that. And I just want to tell you to I just want to thank the Lord for life and everything that he has done.
topic is my neighbor. And the scripture is coming from Matthew 22, verse 39. And it reads, And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbors as thyself. And the God were the days where we thought our neighbors were just persons who live next door, or persons who were just out of their houses close to us. But I believe that our neighbors is anyone, our neighbor, or anyone you know who need an helping hand. And we're just going to pray that we will love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Because I think that if we love our neighbors as we love ourselves, I think the world would have been a better place, a far better place. So we're just going to pray for our neighbors. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for our neighbors. I want to pray that we will love them the way that we love ourselves. Lord Jesus, as we before you, God, we are grateful. Almighty God, for introducing to us the word love. Oh, Lord God, we are grateful, Lord Jesus. Almighty God, for you, Lord God, because you, Lord God, Lord God, took that meaning, Almighty God, and show us, oh God, a perfect definition of that word love. Oh, Lord God, that you didn't just say it, Almighty God, but you prove it, Almighty God, on the cross or at Calvary. So, Lord Jesus, Almighty God, I know that it is your will, Lord God, for us to love each other. Oh, Lord God, we know that that's a great commandment. When you said that we should love you, Lord God, and then you said that we should love our neighbors, and those, these two commandments, Almighty God, are the greatest commandments, Almighty God. Lord God, I pray, Almighty God, that love will shine in this world. Lord Jesus, I pray, Almighty God, as saints, oh Lord God, as neighbors, oh God, that we will love each other. Lord God, I pray that we will not live bad. Lord Jesus, especially being a Christian, Lord Jesus, I pray.
hallelujah. There is none like you, O King. You are the King of kings. You are the God of gods. Hallelujah. Fairer than the lily of the valley. Brighter than the morning star. Hallelujah. You are worthy. There is just none like you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Hallelujah. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Be magnified in this place today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. 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 What a wonderful your word in Jesus. Hallelujah. Today I want to read from the book. I want to read from the book of John chapter 9. And I'm going to be reading the first five verses. And I think it's safe to say that I will not be long today. Amen. So the word says, now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Amen. Sorry, that was from the new page in Georgia. Amen. So, I want to... Just talk to us for a little while on the thought. Now is the time to work. That's, that's the topic. Now is the time to work. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your presence that we feel richly in this place. We thank you for the privilege to worship. And, oh God, we thank you for the gift of salvation. Dear God, I pray for a word from above that you speak. Lord God, through this lump of clay, and that you want to anoint these lips and this tongue, and oh God, you'll speak to us, speak to your people. I pray that your word will accomplish its purpose, oh God, and every power of the enemy will be defeated. Let your will be done, oh God, as we seek the salvation of souls right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless God. And I just want to read verse 4 again. It says, I must work the work. The works of him who sent me while it is day the night is coming when no one can work amen and so this scripture amen just a few just the day before the bible says that jesus was at the feast of tabernacle and at the last day of the Feast of Tabernacle, Jesus declared, he cried out, the Bible says, on the last day of the Feast, and says, those who believe in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And then the very next day, he went into the temple, and he declared that those who believe in him shall know the truth. And he said, the truth shall set you free. And the Pharisees and the people began to question Jesus Christ. And Jesus declared to them, he said, I am, bless God. And he said to them that he existed before Abraham. And the people at that point in time took up stones, the Bible said. And they took up stones to stone him. But somehow when they took up stones, the Bible says that Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Jesus went through their midst and they could not kill him because it was not his time. This is not my main topic, but I want somebody to understand that they can't kill you if it is not your time. 
Just as how they couldn't kill Jesus because it was not his time. Regardless of how the devil roars and whatever he says, hallelujah, God has appointed you a time. And until God said it's time for you to die, then you cannot die. And so Jesus, though they wanted to kill him, somebody, Jesus slipped through their midst, amen, and he passed by them. And the Bible says that as Jesus was making his escape from this hostile mob, he was escaping from this mob, wanting to kill him. I don't know if anybody ever run for your life. I don't know if anybody ever tried to kill you. Or probably don't try to kill you, but you're somewhere and you hear gunshot fire. Amen, bless God, you run. Amen, bless God. I remember one sister testifying that she was on a bus. Amen, and they stopped the bus. They were robbing the bus, and she said she alighted from that bus, and she began to run. She don't know where she go, but she just run. Amen, bless God. Some of you may remember the testimony. But so it is, when you are running for your life, when you are making an escape, one songwriter saw when he was running for his life, hallelujah, he said, look here, it must be a good thing or a good man, but I never stop to check, hallelujah. So when you're running for your life, you don't stop to check. But Jesus here was running for his life, and he saw a blind man. They were trying to kill him. He was making his escape. And he saw a blind man. And somehow Jesus was touched by this blind, blind man's amen, plight that he didn't care anymore about his life. He wasn't trying to get away from the people anymore. Hallelujah. He stopped to deal with the blind man. Hallelujah. I don't know how many of us would do that. That if you are wrong, and you see somebody say, next time, probably if it was the next day, would I help him? But right now, we need to get away. But not Jesus at all. Amen. In the midst of this situation, Jesus stopped to attend to the man's needs. In the midst of this situation, Jesus stopped to be neighborly. You just pray about being a neighbor. Hallelujah. Jesus was more concerned about the man that he was concerned about himself. I want you to understand that this man didn't even follow to Jesus. It's not like the Bible said there were others like Bartimaeus who said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. But this man never ever called out. Jesus does spot the man. Amen. And so this man, there is significance about this blind man. There's something important about this blind man. Because the Bible gives us six, are you going to count it? There are six instances in, in scripture. Check the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Six times Jesus healed people who were blind. But this one is the only man who was blind from birth. So the other times people were blind. They used to see before and they got blind. Probably some of them were blind because they went blind because of a disease. Or some of them went blind because of an accident. But this man, the Bible says he was born blind from birth. And so what was so significant about this blind man who was born blind? He never, he had never seen anything from the day he was born. Why Jesus stopped to attend to this blind man? Can I tell you something, saints and visitors alike, that this blind man, amen, symbolizes the natural state of unregenerate man, the natural state of human beings in their unsafe state, amen, because he was born blind, and the Bible says that we were conceived in sin, hallelujah, we are transgressors from the womb, and from the very womb this man was blind, from the very womb, hallelujah, just as though we are alienated from the life of God, because of our ignorance and our spiritual blindness, this man was alienated because he was physically blind. He could not see the world. Hallelujah, bless God. And so it represents us as we are blind. Hallelujah, we are blind to our true, to our true.
Jesus is 
Jesus was always uh, some way, some way he was mission oriented. He was always goal oriented. He was focused on his mission. He said to his parents at about age 12, he said, look here, don't you know I would be about my father's business? You see, you need to understand this, that Jesus recognized that as a human being, he only had a short time. He had 33 years on earth to accomplish his mission. And he had three and a half years in public ministry. And so Jesus said, look here, I must word the work of him who sent me while it is day, because the night is coming when nobody can work. I don't have a long time. I only have a short time. And so I must word the work. And so one time, when he went to see somebody, the disciples come and they said, but Jesus said, I eat all day, have some food. Jesus said, for good. Uh, Jesus said, look here, I have food to eat, uh, a food you don't know. And they begin to reason among themselves and say, when get to eat? I never see, I never see no crumbs, I never see nobody give anything to eat. And Jesus informed them, Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Because Jesus had a mission and he wanted to finish the work. Hallelujah, bless God. But I want to tell you today, and this is where my topic is going to, because the mission of Jesus Christ is the mission of the church. I want somebody to understand that the mission of the church is to carry out the work of Jesus Christ. The mission of the church is to liberate some blind people. The mission of the church is to spread and to shed some light. And so this is what Jesus said. Before Jesus ascended, ascended he gathered his disciples, about 500 of them. And he said to them, he said, look here, as the Father has sent me, I also sent you. The same thing what the Father sent them to do. And that may I say move for you right now. So that is your mission. But he said to them also, he said, look here in Acts 28, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and in the uttermost parts of the earth. Can I tell somebody that the church's mission is to work the work of Jesus who sent them. Hallelujah. And just as Jesus told his disciples, this is what we need to do. There was a time when Jesus sent out his disciples and he said, look here, this is what I want you to do. And this is what faith majestic temple needs to do. He said, go, he said, heal the sick. He said, go and cleanse the leper. He said, raise the dead. He said, cast out demons. He said, freely you have received. Freely give. I want to tell somebody, I have received this free salvation. I've been healed many times. I've been delivered many times. And when the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost, we are here to do the work. Because if somebody is sick, you can't get your healing today. If somebody is depressed, you can't get your deliverance Because we'll come to give you a free gift. Salvation is not cheap, they say, but it is free. Because Jesus paid the price. And so you are not a, a redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. But the Bible says, with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And so we're here to give you what we have received. And the church has been given the keys to make salvation. Can I tell you, if we don't know the work, people won't get saved. Jesus says, I give to you the keys of the kingdom. Of heaven. And whatever you find on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Can I tell you, my majesty? This time we'll start to bind some demons. Some demons are causing crime and violence in the society. This time we'll start to bind some demons. Some demons are causing scamming in the society. This time we'll start to bind some demons. Some demons are causing some big profit. 
life that we're in. Because the Bible, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. He said, you are the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. He said, but if you lose your silver, how can the world receive light? How can it be salted? And so if we don't open the way of salvation to men, they're going to be lost forever. Hallelujah. And so it's time to work, see. You know what is we need to achieve for personal evangelism? Because it's time to work. We don't want a spectator. We don't want a bench warmer. If you want to warm bench, find a nice big church and find a back seat on the sino. But it's time for to work. Because British farm require work. Rose don't require work. Then up to require work. Keep all the gardens require work. Make sure require work. You see all the box field. Hallelujah. And all the water. Then place that require work. We want workers. Hallelujah. Bless God. Because it's time to work. Jesus said, pray the Father that he said, for labor us. Hallelujah. I feel like he's mission. Where's that mission? It's there, right? Oh, next. <laughs> Can I tell somebody? The times are getting evil. We are living in a time. And you see, not just the thing that happened in Montego Bay. We see what's happening. The times are getting evil. Can I tell you, the night is coming. The night not there, but the night is coming. And we need to work now before the night comes because when the night comes, it's too late to get work again. And so we're living in a time when people are not enduring sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, they are itching ears. So they keep unto themselves, teach us, teach us like His Excellency. And they are turning their ears from the truth and turning aside to fables. That's the time we're living in. People don't want to hear the truth. People don't want to hear about righteousness. People don't want to hear your preach holiness. People don't want to hear say you must repent. People want to hear about the blessing plan. And that you must sow a seed. And next year you're gonna get a million. And you're gonna get a big house and a big car. I'm not saying that you can't get that. That's good. But that's not the focus. Because the Bible says, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things shall be added unto you. But first thing is first, you must seek God first. But some people have set their mind for house and car and man and woman and money first. That's where you get it wrong. We are living in a time when it is the last days. And perilous times are not just coming. Perilous times are here. Can I tell somebody, perilous times are here. Because men are lovers of themselves. They are lovers of money. They are boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness and denying the power. Can I tell you, that's the time they are living in. But I, I, I'm going to give you the admission of Paul. Can you know what Paul said? Paul said, but concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. I don't have to tell anybody that these days are wicked. If you're watching the news, I, I, I know many colleagues that tell me they can't manage the news no more. Stop watching the news. That just can't manage it. I remember 20 years ago the news never seemed so bad. But now as you turn on the TV and you're watching the news, it's just wickedness after wickedness after and if you call it you get the praise and some people say well I don't know what you can manage it but I don't need to write to you because it says you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night for when they say peace and safety then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman amen and they shall not escape can I tell you Brothers, you might have some idea when the baby comes. Some idea. Most times they take the year that have come before half. But when Jesus coming back, you know what I mean? The Bible says, suddenly, sudden destruction. And so therefore, saints, now is the time to work. Can I talk to somebody? It is not time to be distracted. It's not the time to be caught up in your selfish pursuits. And you just want, want, want the pleasures of the world. That's not the time. But can I tell you the days far spent, the 
The night is at hand and the call is going out. You know what call is going out? The call is going out. There are people are crying out to us. They are saying, Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? People need to hear. They need a word from God. They need to know what's happening. So many people are confused with COVID and everything that's happening in society. And the call is going out. Watchman, what of the night? Hallelujah. We are God's watchmen. And we need to warn people that the night is coming. The night is coming. We need to warn them. They are crying out. What of the night? We need to tell them. The night is coming. The night is coming. The Bible says that the watchman sees the sword coming. And does not blow the trumpet. The people are, and the people are not warned. And the sword comes and takes the first from among them. He's taken away in his, in his iniquity. But his blood I will repay at your hand. It's time to work. We can't afford for the blood of the people to be on our hand. Because the Bible says that if they never know what they're going to them iniquity. If we don't do our work, people are going to die in their sins. It's time to work. But the Bible says, when I say to the wicked, O wicked, you shall surely die. And you, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way. The wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood I will require to your hand. Nevertheless, if you want the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Can I tell you, we need to do the work. God will have warned us and come to them. It is warning time. It is warning time. We must warn people of the impending danger. We must warn them through our personal witness. We must warn them through our teaching. We must warn them through our preaching. But it's time to warn people. Some things are happening and I tell you it's not normal things happening now. I see so many things happening in society. Years of actually 33 years from January. 33 years from January. And things I used to read in the Bible. I said, oh that ever happened. No, I see it. I see clear what we have. It's warning time. To the unsaved, to those who are here right now, you're not saved. You're not never been baptized in Jesus' name. You're, you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. If the time for saints to work is limited, then the time for you to get saved is also limited. That's it. Because we must work the work while it is near, because the night is coming over the hour. So if you have limited time, you have limited time to get saved too. And for the coming of the Lord, let me tell you why I got it. The coming of the Lord is near. We don't know when it's coming. But also, no one knows when we are she will lose their life. Can I tell you what happened on Friday? There's a young girl I witnessed to at work. I always witness to her. I invite her to church. And she let me know. She said, my mother is an apostolic, so she knows it. And my wife said, what are you waiting on? Why you don't give your life to Christ? Come on. And she said, yeah, you know what? You know what happened to her? Friday. She's coming home from work in her car. Fear in the car. She probably have the car just about a year now. And she's not doing anything wrong. She's just driving home. And you know what happened? A drunk driver. The man drunk on a drive. Coming the other way, run off and slamming her. Slamming her. She spent Friday night into Sunday in the hospital. And the doctor said, all right. When I look at her car, it mash up. But it's the grace of God why she's alive. And I sent her a WhatsApp message. And I said, God has been gracious to you. You have a purpose for your life. That's why I'm keeping you safe. And I'm planning to follow up with her. Can I tell you, none of us know when our number will be called. You think somebody come out to me and say, all right, I'm dead this morning. That's how it go. That's how it go. So none of us know the time. And so, because we do not know the admonition, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit says, and the Holy Spirit is saying this to you. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. And say to somebody, now is the time to work. Now is the time to get saved. If you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Then he goes on to say in Hebrews 3, don't let the deceitfulness of sin cause your hearts to be hardened. You know, sin is deceitful. Sin is so deceitful that we can have a near death experience and we talk God and say, Oh God, I'm glad you saved me, I'm going to serve you. But as you go on, sin deceives you, you go back to your own way. The deceitfulness of sin. 
I remember before I got sick many times I used to say, boy, God, you get me out whenever I give my life to you. <laughs> well, thank God he was merciful. I eventually gave my life to him. But don't take a chance. Hear the advice of Peter. On the day when the church started, on the day of Pentecost, and Peter preached, they were convicted and they said, What shall we do to be saved? And if you're here and you want to know what you shall do, I'm going to give you Peter's advice. You know, Peter said to them, Peter said, Repent. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the removal of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's my word to you. Now is the time. Now is the time to receive the Holy Ghost. Sister Leah testify and say, I'm going to tell her that when the rapture comes, the Holy Ghost will come on. Can you imagine? If the time of somebody and the Holy Ghost is here, what will happen when the Holy Ghost leaves and allow Satan to just run around on it? That's why we have not the rapture you now. When the Antichrist rises, the Holy Ghost just will come out and say, All right, I'm begging all the time to serve me. I don't want to come. I'm let you go to another and say, What's going on? Them times some wicked things have happened. The Bible says at one time, one third of the earth was about dead. It said, Demons are going to let loose from the royal Euphrates and they're going to and they're going to torment me. And their torment will be like scorpions and scorpions sting you. And men that time are going to want to die. And they're going to not going to die. They're going to say, Oh, one day, death, death must be better. And the Bible says they can't find them. They're going to run to the mountain and the mountain says, Look here, man, look somewhere for God myself. Move. That's what the Bible says. I want to say to somebody, while the blood is running warm in your vein, now is the time to repent. If you want to repent, if you want to give your life to God, if you want to receive the Holy Ghost, come to the altar now. In Jesus' name. Come to the altar. Sing us, you have a song. Amen. No.